Bendito seja o nome do Senhor. Eu saúdo a todos com a paz do Senhor. Em reverência à leitura da palavra, vamos colocar de pé. E nós vamos abrir as nossas Bíblias em Marcos, capítulo de número 16. Mark 16. Gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, from verse 5, from 5 to 7. This says the word of the Lord. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tells his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, as he said to you. Amen. The church may be seated. My brethren, with the death and resurrection of Jesus, it begins what we call the beginning of the church. And together with the church, With, uh, together with the first days of the church also comes the Holy Spirit. When Jesus dies and resurrects, He gives us this great blessing, which is a place for us to offer our services to Him. And the Holy Spirit that leads us, that guide us, that teach us to be in the presence of Jesus. There can't be a church without the Holy Spirit. That's what Jesus left, the bread and the wine. The bread that represents the body of Christ He institutes the supper the, of the Lord and the last uh, Passover of Jesus. He leaves us this instruction. The bread, which is the body of Christ that, that was broken, and the wine that represents the Holy Spirit. There is no body, physical body. Now, let us analyze here There is no physical body without blood. If you go on the street and you, you see a puddle of blood, no one says, hey, somebody's alive. Everybody says, somebody died here. There is somebody dead here. Where is the person that died? Because blood outside of the body symbolizes death. And when Jesus teaches what the church needs to do, when the Holy Spirit begins to operate on the life of the church, when the Holy Spirit begins to flow in the life of the church, the Holy Spirit teaches to seek something very important, which is sanctification. The sanctification 
is the operation of the Holy Spirit in the life of those who are a part that comprise the body of Christ. And here we see exactly the moment in which three servants, three women that, ser that knew Jesus, that walked with Jesus, that saw the miracles that Jesus had operated, that heard the word of Jesus, that had time to have conversations and to be with Jesus. Surely they may have seen Jesus dying. They also may have seen the body of Christ being removed from the cross. And now, Sunday morning, they were very sad with a heavy heart because they missed Jesus so much. They went to the tomb or where the body of Christ was with uh, perfumes and frankincense, perfumes in order for them to put on the body of Jesus so that the dead body of Jesus could be prolonged a little more. And when they arrived there, they saw an angel. And this angel brought to them a great new news. The angel said, you came here to see Jesus, right? But look, he's not here anymore. He has resurrected. He's alive. And there is more. You want to see him? You need to go to Galilee. That's where he will be. My brethren, man, many times, man only stays here like these three sisters stay. Remained. They forget of the promises of God. They forget the word of God. They easily forget what God has promised. Jesus never heed the fact that he was going to die, but also that he was going to resurrect. And many people today, they enter inside of the church with the same feeling of those three women bringing to Jesus a perfume, bringing to Jesus something that may maintain the dead body of Jesus for a little longer. There are people that today, they simply comprise a group of members of a church. People that have Jesus still dead. People that think that Jesus is still dead. You know why? Because the people that do not hear the voice of God, the people that do not want to hear the voice of God, the people that don't want to speak with God, they deal with Jesus in the same way as this three women here. Because if Jesus is alive, if Jesus resurrected on the third day, he's no longer in the tomb, then it means that he is alive. And if Jesus is alive, Jesus speaks. Jesus communicates with men. Jesus hears the prayer of man. Jesus manifests to man. Jesus comes to our rescue. Jesus is, makes himself available to help bless the life of man. But many times people don't want this. You know why? Because when God speaks, when man opens up his heart and her heart, and they accept the life that is in Jesus, then there comes what the angel said. You want to see Jesus? You need to go to Galilee. That's where he will be. Many, many times don't want to take the commitment. Man doesn't want to have the responsibility having to pay attention to hear the voice of Jesus, to hear the, to hear the teaching and to hear the direction from God. It's much easier. He 
just go to church, bring uh, some perfumes and frankincenses, and does what many do. They cry. Oh, Jesus is no longer here. It's much easier. To many, it's much easier. Many, they think that this is easier. Those women, they have forgotten that what Jesus has said. I will not remain dead. I will depart from here. I need to die, but I will resurrect. I will overcome death. I will overcome the enemy of man. But many forget this. Many enter into the church simply to come here as um, a shore. Uh, I need to go there. It's been a long time since I've gone to church. Uh, it's been a long time since I went to visit the church. But what is important is what the angel spoke to those women. He resurrected. He's no longer here. He is the place where they placed him. Look here. He was placed here. He's no, long, he's no longer here. The dead Jesus is no longer here. That's true. And the angel says, Now go and tell the disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to, to you. And my brethren, going to the house of the Lord, Man needs to come here with the intention of hearing the voice of God. Man needs to enter here with this understanding. I'll go today to the service because I need to hear the voice of Jesus. I need to seek a direction for my life. I need to speak with the Lord that the life that I'm leading is, has no purpose for me. I need the transformation. I need the support. I need the Lord to manifest I need the Lord to change the way I'm living. And that only happens when man uh, goes to the place where Jesus was, where his body was empty. A man wants to hear the voice of the Lord. He needs to go where Jesus is. And the angel says, Go now and speak with the disciples and speak with Peter. Now I ask my brethren, was Peter a disciple or not? Was Peter a disciple or not? Yes, he was. Why then the angel said, tell the disciples and to Peter? Why, why the angel spoke in this way? Why the angel emphasized the life of Peter? Well, there are many reasons, but in here it is because one of the reasons here in this text is because there are moments in which God speaks with the church. And there are moments in which God wants to speak with the whole church. But there are moments in which God wants to speak with you individually. In this moment, God wants to uh, direct to you. Because that's how you, you came. You came alone. Many times you are at home. Many times you are in your bedroom. bedroom. Many times you are going through your suffering, your anguish, alone. And nobody knows. Nobody is aware of it. But when you pray to Him, the Father, in the name of Jesus, He answered your prayer. He was there with you. That's why He says here, Father, go and tell the disciples. And also tell Peter. Because it's a moment in which God speaks directly to a man or to a woman. And if you want, if you truly want to understand the project of salvation of man, you need to be where God is asking you to be. It is not where you want to be, or it's not where you choose to be. It's not the place that you think is the best place, or you're going to choose the place and there God needs to be. Because there are places where God is not. When Abraham heard the voice of God, the call from God, God told Abraham, you need to sacrifice your son. You know, tell the mountain you, they're going to show you, and there you sacrifice, sacrifice your son. If Abraham had gone to another place, a place where he chose 
the place that he thought it would be uh, that would be the right place it's the place that I will choose for this moment Abraham would have come down the mount alone when, Ab when Abraham heard the voice of God and he answers the request of the Lord and when he hears and puts in practice the fellowship that he had with God God reveals the place and in that place the chosen place for God by God then there, there came the deliverance for Isaac there came the salvation for Isaac because the lamp was already there waiting to take the place of Isaac that's why the angel said speak with my disciples speak with Peter to go to Galilee there they will see the Lord my brethren being with the Lord it's not simply to be in a physical place being with the Lord is you being in fellowship with the Lord it's not simply a physical place but it is also a spiritual place it's not a location a geographic location but it's a spiritual location that you need to uh, take on on the Lord to hear the voice of the Lord you need to be where God wants you to be and it's not the place where we want it's the Lord that chooses the place of adoration. Sometime ago, somebody asked me, where should we praise the Lord? Is it here or is it there? But true worshiper praises the Lord with the heart. The true worshiper prays with sincerity. And those are the ones that God is seeking. Those are the ones that God is looking for because they will receive the blessing from, from the Lord. Today we are here in the house of the Lord. But what is important is not to be here physically. What is important is that we are here with our hearts in Jerusalem. We need to be here physically, but our desire, our intention, our mind needs to be geared towards the heavenly Jerusalem because that's where we're going to see our God, our Lord. That's where we're going to be forever in the arms of our Savior. That's what the first faithful church needs to be worked on by the Holy Spirit. That's why the faithful church needs to be in fellowship and in sanctification in order to receive the direction and information from the Lord. So if there, there is a church if you're in the church and you do not, do not accept the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to heaven. It's going to be very difficult for you to go. If you are simply praising the dead Jesus, if you are simply praising Jesus that is still hanging on a cross, that is still there buried, it's going to be very difficult for you to go to heaven. Because the word says that we need to be in sanctification with the Lord. Yes, we cannot be in this place with our minds and our hearts outside of this place. That's why when we are in the presence of the Lord, we need to be paying attention. We need to have the sensibility to hear the voice of God. We cannot simply be here and close our eyes and close our ears in order to hear the voice of God because God speaks. Jesus reveals himself to man. That's why I need to be a part of the church. I need to be linked to God through an environment. I need to have the Holy Spirit controlling my life. I need to have the Holy Spirit teaching me. I need to have the Holy Spirit putting limits on me. Uh, teaching me if there is no sanctification there is no fellowship with God if there is no presence of the Holy Spirit flowing in the midst of the church a visitation of the Holy Spirit God speaking God manifesting you are like those women were there going there to pick up a, a dead body but Jesus had, has overcome death he has resurrected and he's alive here in this place and if he is alive here, you need to speak with him. 
you need to direct yourself to Him. You need to have fellowship with Him and be willing to hear the voice of God. Sometimes He speaks with the church. Sometimes He speaks with you. Sometimes you pray to the Lord and God gives you a spiritual gift. God teaches, teaches you, look, you are not pleasing me this way. Now, we need to take another direction, we need to stop doing this, because you are not pleasing me. But it is all part of you being in the presence of God. It is all part of, of this process. This is the living God. This is what is to have uh, being controlled by the Holy Spirit. It's not possible for you to be a part of the church where God does not speak. And he tells them, look, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, as he said to you. Jesus had told them, we are going to meet. Jesus has spoken to them that this was not going to be the last uh, event that would happen in the life of Jesus. Death, uh, the death was not going to be the last thing that would happen in the life of Jesus. When the enemy saw the Jesus going to the cross and when he saw the death of Jesus, he may have been very happy. Hey, everything's over. But when Jesus resurrected, this was the greatest victory of man. At that moment, the, the veil was stripped from top to bottom, and man began to have a greater intimacy with God. And there's no other way. There's no one else that can bring you to God, only Jesus. Because it was Jesus that overcame death. It was Jesus who has resurrected. And it is Jesus who is alive in our hearts. You entered here tonight. We cannot tell what you expect from God. We know that you're here. You have been invited by someone. Or maybe you felt in your heart the desire to be here, and here you are. But here, in this environment, this spiritual environment, Jesus is alive. Here you will have to hear the voice of God. Here you have to place your knee on the floor and put your mouth on the dust and plead to the Lord because the Lord has taught us this, that our victory is to be dependent on God. There is no other path, there is no other way other than to opening up our hearts and glorifying Him because today our lives, our salvation is guaranteed in Jesus. And that's what you want. You will have this he here tonight. And that's why what you came here to get, you can be sure that today your name is being written in the Book of Life and nobody is going to be able to take that, that away from you. The, the right of being a, an eternal citizen of, in the presence of the Father. Amen. May God bless us. I'm going to hear a song and you will be meditating on what are the words of God. Many times you may have never heard the voice of Jesus, but tonight God is speaking in a great way in your heart.
Glory to Jesus. Oh, brethren, when we were praying for the service, the Lord has shown a few people who entered here with a couple of necessities. And one of them is a man. And he's leading his life, his spiritual life. He's leading his relationship with God like this three women here. He thinks that being in the presence of God is simply to come every once in a while and put their, uh, your, the perfumes and frankincenses and carrying for the dead body of Jesus. And he thinks that that's enough. He's not worried about seeking direction from God. He doesn't worry about going deeper in what the mysteries of God. He thinks that whatever he has uh, until now is just enough. And what those women, if they had placed what they brought in the body of Jesus in a couple of days, the effect of what they brought would just run out. But when man is in the presence of God with an open heart, building his relationship with God on the rock which is Jesus, this relationship, this intimacy with God, it will remain forever. Because nothing will destroy what the Holy Spirit has built in your life. And we will be firm in the presence of Jesus. You are not going to uh, be uh, founded on human mind. You are not going to have a foundation what something that is fleeting, something that extinguish, extinguishes it with time, something that runs out in the first difficulty that you go through. But when you are uh, our foundation is in Jesus, the storm may come, the, the evil day, the bad day may come, everything may come, but you will be able to withstand everything because Jesus will be victorious on your behalf. You're not going to be fighting alone because Jesus is alive and he goes before you, breaking the barriers, breaking the difficulties, breaking everything that opposes to your relationship with God. And the Lord has also shown a, a lady who is here. She needs to have a closer relationship with God, but something prevents her from doing this. It's an addiction. She has tried everything to get free from this addiction. She knows that it is not good for her, but tonight God wants to give you an experience. You need tonight in prayer ask for help from God and you will see how God will deliver you there are things that we will not be able to overcome alone there are things that we cannot no matter how much we try no matter how much we try to do everything right but there are things that alone we are not going to be able to be victorious against and that's why Jesus was victorious against death in order to give us this opportunity to be victorious as well. Because in Jesus, we are more than victorious. In Jesus, we can do all things. Because Jesus is everything for us. He is everything that we have. And if you want to receive Him with the Lord, this deliverance, you now pray to the Lord and we now shout for help. And this help will come this moment and by faith, Jesus will give you what you need. Let us stand up. Alleluia.
Glory to Jesus. I'm going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. We praise you because you are the one who blesses. You place us on the right path, Lord. Where we were, one day you rescued us, Lord. That's why we are today in your presence, in your house, to hear from your word, to feel your presence. And we can say that you are everything in our lives. We glorify, Lord, for everything that we have we experienced here tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight we want once again praise your name. We want to glorify you because one day you gave us the greatest miracle which is eternal life. We praise you, Lord. Because our names are written in the Book of Life, we have the assurance, and we can say in loud voice, the sure soon we will be with you, and that we hope, we desire the return of the Lord Jesus. We praise you because, for as long as we are here, we have had the experience of the Holy Spirit. We have not lacked anything. We have not lacked your hands laying upon us. We have not lacked the comfort, the consolation. We have not lacked the direction of the Holy Spirit. So now, in gratitude, gratitude to you, we want to ask you that you receive our praise and adoration, and so that we have a week of victories in your presence. Take us home in peace, each one to their own home but never away from your presence. We ask that we may never look behind, that we may never get discouraged in our walk, but that we may always be close to you, and that we may ha always hear your voice and be sensitive to the touch of the Holy Spirit. Bless everyone who came up to your house. Give them physical healings. We ask for deliverances. We ask, Lord, that you may speak to the hearts and that your spirit may have freedom to transform and to save lives. Take us home in peace is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say that the wonderful grace of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. The church may sit down. If anyone desires a prayer and assistance, we are here, the pastors, deacons, ushers, and the sisters as well. We are making ourselves available to you so that you may understand the entire project of salvation of men. We would like to remind the brethren that Tuesday at 8 o'clock we have our service. It's a normal service like any other service, so the brethren will be uh, getting ready so that we may be here to praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I want to say the peace of the Lord to everyone.